All right, guys, welcome back. Let's talk about Grandview Speedway, which happened just last night over there in Bechtelsville, Pennsylvania. What a wild race this was, as you could tell by at the bottom of the board. Uh, a lot of different lead changes by three different drivers, including three different leaders in the last six laps of the race. Um, yeah, we didn't really know. I mean, we kind of knew what to expect going to the Grandview, that it was going to be a pretty good race, but we didn't expect it to be maybe and possibly the best race of the year for Highland Racing. I don't know, the Bob Weicker at Port Royal was pretty good, uh, but this one was very unpredictable, I feel like is the word to use for this race. Um, you know, it looks like, you know, if you looked at it just like this, you'd say, okay, Brent Marks won from the front row. He won from the pole. That was far from the truth. Um, this track had a lot of different spots in it where it seemed like, you know, a guy would go to the top or he'd, you know, he'd go to the bottom or he'd try and float the middle. And it was changing every single lap, it seemed like. And uh, the, the, was, the weird thing was, like, the traffic was almost as fast as the leader, it seemed like. There was one point in time uh, when Brent Marks got out front. You know, as you can see here, he led the first 24 laps of the race. Uh, and he was kind of picking off lap cars here and there, but he didn't really get by too many of them. You know, he'd maybe pass three lap cars under that 24-lap run there. And at one point in time, he had lapped Briggs Danner. And then Briggs Danner, as you know, he's on the bottom and Brent Marks drives around on the outside. And as he does that, you know, like three or four laps later, Briggs Danner is able to drive back by him on the bottom. So Briggs Danner actually unlapped himself. And, you know, maybe a couple people were wondering, well, why the hell would he do that? He really wasn't doing anything different. He was just running the bottom and it was just faster at some points in the race. Right. And it was kind of weird to witness um, as Brent Marks would finally get passed by Brad Sweet uh, one lap, but it, obviously around lap 24. Brent Marks goes to run the bottom of the racetrack and, and he kind of misses it and he runs the middle. And it was clear that you could not run the middle here tonight at Grandview. And Brad Sweet would drive right around him on the outside and take the lead back away. Brad Sweet would only lead four laps of this race before he would go to the top of the racetrack and he would have a mistake and nearly spin the car around. Uh, he got up in the in the crumbles in, in turn three, looked like he may have drugged the tail tank off the wall, nearly half spun the car came down the racetrack, loses two positions. Brent Marks takes the lead back away. On lap number 30, he would only lead one lap before Tyler Courtney would then come into play, and he would make the pass on Brent Marks when he tried to go to the top of the racetrack. So, uh, I mean, it was crazy. It seemed like there was nobody that wanted to win this race. Where, you know, Brad Sweet got out front, he made a mistake. Brent Marks got out front, and he made a mistake. And then Tyler Courtney would lead four laps, and he would make a mistake on the very last lap of the race. Uh, at the end, for like the last seven laps, I would say, it was kind of locked down around the bottom. I don't know if it took rubber or if the top just got too far around and it just wasn't quite fast enough. But if you watch the replay on flow, you'll see that the entire field is on the inside of the racetrack. And at one point in time, I would say from maybe about lap number, I don't know, maybe lap 24 or 25 till the end, Lucas Wolf was the next car to go a lap down in this race. And he would never go a lap down. He was in front of leaders from lap 24 to lap 35. And maybe even before that, like they were behind him and he was the next car to go lap down. He like he would maintain a five car length lead over him. Nobody could get past Lucas Wolf. Um, and it made it to where the leaders had to try and drive around him on the outside. And at one point in this race, you know, Brad Sweet and Brent Marks are side by side for what seems like 10 laps or so before Brent Marks finally would make the pass. But back to Tyler Courtney. He was in the right place at the right time. He was in the catbird seat, whatever you want to call it. He makes it by on the inside of Brent Marks to take the lead away. And then on the last lap, I'm not even paying attention to Tyler Courtney. I'm like, okay, he's got this one in the bag. It's locked down around the bottom. Nobody's going to pass anybody. And Brent Marks tries to go around the outside of the racetrack, coming to the white flag. Him and Rico Avery go side by side because Marks tried to try to do something different, and it did not work. And then going into turn number one, Tyler Courtney, apparently he heard something. That's what he said in the, in the post-race interview. He said he sounded like he heard something on the outside, and he went up there to try and protect, and it was a huge mistake. He did not realize that the bottom had become the dominant line. Brent Marks drives by him into turn number one and two on the final lap and is able to take the lead away. Into turns three and four, Marks goes to the inside right behind Lucas Wolf, and Tyler Courtney tries the top. Doesn't work out for him. Marks wins. Sunshine barely edges out Rico Abreu for the second spot. And, uh, man, it was, just, it was just crazy. It's one of those races you do not see very often where it seemed like nobody wanted to win. And it was another one of those rare occasions when the lap cars were actually equally or maybe even sometimes faster than the leaders. We saw it with Briggs Danner. He unlapped himself. And we saw it with Lucas Wolf. 
Lucas Wolf finished 22nd in this race, but it looked like at the end he may have been one of the best cars on the racetrack. It was really weird to see because nobody could catch him. And then if they did catch him, they couldn't pass him. He would just kind of, you know, score it away again. So um, crazy stuff in this race, man. Grandview Speedway, they did a fantastic job with this track. They had to, you know, redo it two or three. They didn't have to redo it, but they had to do some track work, you know, after qualifying, before the feature. They had to do a couple things to it throughout the night, but they know exactly what to do to get it into a racy shape, and they did exactly that. So Brett Marks would win the race. He would lead laps 1 through 24. Brad Sweet would lead laps 25 through 29. Brent Marks led laps 30 or lap 30, then Tyler Courtney 31 to 34, and Brent Marks would lead lap number 35. So crazy stuff. If you haven't seen the highlight reel, go on Flo's YouTube page or whatever and go take a look at it. Brent Marks would get the win for $22,000. Normally these races are $20,000 win, but he did get a $2,000 bonus for a posse or a Pennsylvania-based driver getting the win uh, from Pioneer Pole Building. So $22,000 for Brent Marks. Tyler Courtney would end up in the second position. That is his eighth second place finish of the year. That's right. He has ran second eight times with Highland Racing in 2024 so far. Rico Abreu continues his strong run uh, the last couple of races. That is his third podium finish in a row. He finishes up in third after starting fifth. Brad Sweet, who looked like he was going to be the guy to win this race, he ends up in the fourth position. Could not recover after having that issue while in the lead in turn three, where he almost spun the car, almost wrecked, honestly. Uh, but he ends up in the fourth spot. Corey Day, a solid run for him, eighth to fifth in that 14 machine. First time there to Grandview for him, and he comes home with the top five. Parker Price Miller continues to do incredible things right now without a crew chief on that car. I think that's, somebody said, like maybe his sixth top 10 finish in a row, maybe. Uh, and Parker Price Miller has been absolutely fantastic. Fifth at the Bob Weikert. And then before that, he was in the top 10 at Kokomo, top 10 at Tri-City, top 10 at 34. He has been fantastic. Great job by that team, and uh, hopefully they keep this strong run going here with Highland Racing. He's going to Lawrenceburg, a place that he's been pretty good at in the past as well, coming up on Friday. 5R car, Tyler Ross. He started second in this race. He had a fantastic night. He got a little bit lucky in the heat race when TJ Stutz was the fast qualifier, but slipped out of the top 10, or sorry, out of the out of the uh, transfer spots, and he would finish second in his heat race and go to the dash. He would start second. He'd slip back to seventh, but still a great run. For Tyler Ross, good enough for $2,600 payday for him. And I'm sure that team has got to be absolutely thrilled with how the night went for them. Uh, and his first, I think it was his only his second Highland Racing event that he's ever ran before. The last one came at this race last year. So seventh place for Tyler Ross. Nice job by them. This is Tanner Thorson. Do not have his magnet, but he continues his strong runs during the midweek money series events. An eighth place run from 14th for Tanner Thorson and keeps himself at least in the conversation for a top five or maybe even the championship with the midweek money series. I think he's only maybe like 60 points behind in that uh, little mini championship. So good run for Tanner Thorson. Nice job. Something that team really needed. Uh, Spencer Baston, he was up in the top five at one point in this race. He ends up in the ninth spot in 11th. Another good run for him. So Baston, Parker Price Miller, those two guys here recently have really been heating up in the top 10 a lot. Uh, Zeb Wise, a much needed top 10 finish after starting in 12th. Justin Peck was 11th, and then in 12th, Anthony Macri. Uh, you know, we thought we'd see a little bit more from Macri. It's one of his favorite racetracks there at Grandview. He ends up in 12th, not exactly what he was hoping to see. 13th was Danny Dietrich. Uh, after, you know, winning the Bob Weikert, he ends up in 13th after starting 15th. James McFadden, I left his magnet at home, unfortunately. 17th to 14th, McFadden could not figure it out there in the feature. He was extremely good in his heat race, went 9th to 3rd in the heat race. But his qualifying run really, really hindered the rest of his night. He did not get going in the qualifying run at all. He was like third to last or something in his flight. Uh, 15th, Cole Macedo. I believe his first time there to Grandview. 19th to 15th for him. 16th was Cap Henry in the 2MD. 17th, Kyle Reinhardt. 18th, got to give a shout out to Reese Nowatarski. Getting the win in his heat race and going to the dash. Uh, you know, the, the qualifying was a high. The heat race was a high. But then it started going downhill a little bit for Reese Nowatarski after that. I think he went like second, uh, maybe from first to seventh in the dash, and then seventh to 18th in the feature. But this kid is still uh, learning the ropes in a 410 sprint car, and I'm sure he's got to be absolutely thrilled with how the things went there. Um, you know, he's still trying to figure it out in these sprint in these 410 sprint cars. And um, I, I wanted to give him a little, <clears throat> excuse me, a little shout out here in this race recap. 
18th place for Reese Nowitarski, 19th for Casey Kane, 20th for Cy Lynch, 21st after using a provisional for Jacob Allen, 22nd for Lucas Wolf, who got a lot of shout outs here in this race recap and a lot of shout outs in the race call if you watch the highlight because nobody could pass the 5W. 23rd was TJ Stutz, 24th for a uh, provisional for Brenham Crouch, 25th was the 39 of Briggs Danner, and then rounding out the field was Corey Eliason, who looked like he was going to have a good night, but he had something, a, a part break or something during the feature, had to pull in under green flag conditions, and he would finish up in 26th position. So the hard charger in this race was Parker Price Miller from 13th to 6th, and uh, Rico Abreu, he was the Durst Dice Roll guy. He started 5th, was looking for an extra 2500 bucks, would come up a few spots short, and would end up in the third position. So overall, fantastic race at Grandview Speedway. Uh, the race fans, they showed up as they always do for a sprint car race there. And um, yeah, absolutely great stuff there. Uh, maybe one of the best races of the year with Highlander Racing. Yet another race where we've had multiple leaders. Nobody's led flag to flag at a Highlander race in a very long time. This is the 19th race of the year. In only two races so far this season, have had one driver lead every single lap. The one of them was the very first race of the year with Kyle Larson. The other one was at like the third race of the year at Golden Isles. So it has literally been since the second weekend of Highlander Racing action that we've had one guy lead every single lap, which is absolutely fantastic. The fans have really gotten a treat here with High Limit, and uh, the racing has just been fantastic. And now we go to two pretty racy joints coming up here at Lawrenceburg and at Butler as well. So. Really looking forward to continuing on with High Limit, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this race recap video. I'm trying to figure out a way to make it cleaner. I think I'm going to buy some magnets for like these spots right here, the 3rd, the 8th, the 13th. I'm going to buy some magnets so it looks a little bit cleaner, and uh, I'm trying to improve, trying to improve how these videos look. Uh, the magnets were definitely a step in the right direction. The first step was me getting better handwriting. The second step is magnets, and now the third step is going to be positions you know for where they finished at in these races and uh, we maybe have some other stuff up our sleeve as well so if you guys have any ideas to make this better let me know down in the comment section below appreciate all of your support we're almost at 2,000 subscribers i really appreciate that comment down below what did you think about the race at grandview and make sure to hit the like button as well thank you guys so much for watching we'll talk to you again here soon